So this is a pretty cool plasma tank, but what if we threw some LEDs at it? Not too bad. Now what if we added some sound to it? Nice. So in part one here, we're just gonna go with the build. I'm gonna start out with the plasma sponson in here. And I'm going to drill as deep as this small bit of drill bit will go. And then I'm going to pull the drill bit out of the chuck a little bit so I can go deeper. This will give me more support on the drill so I don't end up snapping it. Now this has to go all the way through because I'm going to put an LED in the tip of this to actually have it shooting. Next stage is going to be to strip out this current plasma coil. I'll link the video right here on my whole process on casting and making uh, clear plasma coils so you can put LEDs behind it. Now this right here is actually a little X-Acto knife type blade, but it's actually a saw blade. They're really cool, and I wish I could find them again. Um, so if you know, you can post a link, and I'll follow that. Just total reversal. So I'm just going slow and taking small chips in each pass and just working my way down to make sure that I don't overcut it, and also so that I don't strain the plastic or end up cutting myself or anything. And once that's done, we'll move on to the main plasma gun. This is gonna be quite a bit trickier. I gotta make sure everything fits and it's in two pieces. So I have to make sure everything fits while it's together, but I'm gonna to have to glue them separately so I can put all the LEDs in there. So I have to cut everything out and I also want these tabs to stay in on the side. Um, and then I'll also need to cut out the front portion so I can put an LED there so I can have it firing as well. So here are the actual plasma coils I'm going to put in here that I've uh, 3D printed and then cast. So now I'm just checking to see what the light looks like, try to figure out how many LEDs I want in there, and make sure that it fits everywhere I need it to fit. So now that I've cut a decent sized groove and just the side plasma here, I'm going to make sure that the LED sits in there nicely. And of course it sticks to your finger and pops out, but it looks like this is going to fit pretty well. So I gotta do this to the other side and I have to make sure there's room underneath it for wires and for the wires to get to the front LED. That'll get us to this point here where I'm just checking to make sure that the plasma coil fits on top nicely. The LED sets underneath and as you can see, the wires are already sticking out the back so they're all wired and ready to go. So now that it's all together, we do a test. Now I am testing this on a three volt battery because it's a three volt LED and it should be fine. So I'm gonna to need to cut a hatch so I can get into this later. This is exactly the same as the Lehman Russ video that I did, so I'll link that video here and not worry too much about how this was done. But while I have this bench block out, I need to cut this back portion here for the little plasma coil. So I've drilled four holes so I can make the 90 degree turns with the saw, and I'm just gonna go in and cut it out. Then we have to make sure the plasma coil fits and make sure that it looks good. And oddly enough, I think that brings it to the hardest part here, and that's drilling out the LAS cannon. Now, I have to drill this hole all the way through, so you have to line it up really straight and just hope you have it straight. If you spill out the side, I mean, you can putty it back over, and there's a way to fix that, but honestly, it just kind of sucks. And now most of the holes are drilled and we're fitting stuff, it's time to actually test the plasma coils to make sure they work on the main gun. This is my LED tester here to make sure that I'm not pushing too much current through. There are three LEDs per chip. I'll go through a whole video on exactly how everything's wired and done up. Um, and there's a great shot of the back of my head. Since we're wiring stuff up, we got to wire up the side plasma guns. So this is the front chip that's going to be the firing and then the big main chip for the plasma coil. Both of these are going to get some epoxy with the uh, blue pigment in it which I really like. Uh, this is a white LED for both of these, so the white can kind of bleed through and get extra bright for the plasma. It's the same thing that I do with pretty much all of the plasma that I do with LEDs in it. So I'm gonna clamp in the plasma coil, clean up the excess, and then don't touch it while it dries. So now they have this tank with all these wires hanging out and all the plasma is glued in place. I'm gonna actually go through and mask all of this with some masking fluid. That way when I go to airbrush it, I don't have to worry about covering up all the plasma coils and I don't have to worry about cleaning it at the end. I will do a final clean with some alcohol to take off any paint that did get on there, but this should make that job a little bit easier. So then I took this over to the airbrush booth, gave it a whole coat of camouflage and other colors that I wanted on there, 
And now we're just going to have to go through and take off all of the little masking fluid bits. And that brings us to this state. Just a bunch of wires hanging out the bottom, not soldered to anything yet. Got to make sure everything fits. Try the battery. It is pretty tight in there. This is another one of the tanks that I actually had to rip the side panels off and uh, cut through the side just like I did with the Lehman Russes. That was uh, the same timing and that was a mistake. So here are the two circuit boards I'm putting in here. The one to the left is the soundboard. I have a whole video on that. I will link here. And the other one is the Arduino that I'm using for this. Now, I don't know if you can tell, I'm doing an amazing solder job here on all of these resistors. Totally perfect job. Um, it's probably the best job you'd ever see if my head wasn't in the way the whole time. And assuming you don't want to watch the back of my head, here's what I ended up with. Now, I'm going to go ahead and plug a battery in and give this a test. No use in pushing everything inside and then finding out that I have to do some work on the board for whatever reason. Now that everything's all set up, we go ahead and turn it on. And it looks good. At this point, I didn't have the code complete, so it doesn't really do anything, but all the plasma is glowing, all of it's looking good, and none of it is burning out, so that's good news. So now that I know everything seems to work, I'm going to come in here and put shrink wrap around all of the boards. Now I'm leaving the USB accessible, so if I want to change the code or change the sounds, that is something I can do. But all of the solder joints are where they're going to be pretty much forever. You can always cut these off if you really need to, but this is really going to be here to solidify everything in place, make sure there's no excess strain on the wires, and make sure nothing shorts out. All right, now that it's completely painted, I'm going to go through and with that alcohol, remove any paint that might have got on any of the parts that I want to glow. Specifically, the tips of the barrels is going to be an issue because I didn't block them off in any way and I just kind of let paint get in there because I knew I could clean it out in the end. I should probably mention that the Laz Cannon LED is actually, again, a white LED. I've used some red pigment with epoxy to put over top of it so I get that nice white bleeding through the color that I want kind of effect. It makes it look a lot brighter. And here it is all done. In part two, I'll go over the technical stuff. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.